847 AD, somewhere along the northern seas. For days we have lived winter, wandered in the dark, but I am not the one to back out of a challenge. Ahead, only gray seas melting into gray skies. No familiar sight, no sound but the howling wind. Even the moon has deserted us. Only the heart beating in my chest stops me from becoming as frozen as the air around us. Forefathers warned not to embark on this journey. I am afraid that if we do not find land soon, we will surely perish. A rocky coastline with mountains of pure and brilliant white emerged from the darkness, breathtaking and horrifying in all its splendor. I took the first step in the black sand, knowing there is soil below and sun above is like a remedy to me. I have felt the earth and touched the crystal ground. Nowhere have I known the miracle of life like in this white land. There is no place like this. Landed in Iceland here. It is negative one. I'm super pumped. Oh yeah. This is what I love right here, man. By the way, yo, I've never driven in the snow before. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh Bio Spio. You want to that way? excited I cannot wait I mean look at this gorgeous view let's go snowmobiling one of the reasons one of the many reasons why I'm on this journey is because you know, we, we're here in Iceland, I would get served something like this Brennavine. What is Brennavine? Those would be the initial questions, you know, and then the second thing is, okay, what distillery is making it? Emberic, um, you know, and I would look at this bottle and I always think, what, you know, who makes this? What is this all about? Um, and that's what I'm here to do, and that's what I'm here to tell the story of. I mean, it, it, it all started with a glass of whiskey. <laughs> and uh, Emmert Distillery is a family-run company. Yeah. It's family-funded and yeah. family-founded. Yeah. And uh, me, my father and brother, we simply put, just had an idea. Like many crazy ideas, everybody has the idea of, of uh, making a whiskey distillery, but uh, maybe not everybody does it. <laughs> it's crazy enough and, and tenacious enough to actually make it make it a reality. Because I'll, I'll tell you, it wasn't easy. So in 2011, we have our first experiments run. We uh, do a semi-conscious choice of, of starting with like not knowing the first thing about making whiskey. Our aim for that was maybe in, uh, thinking that we wouldn't be corrupted by some standard practices that are legacy issues for mo and. Uh, the whiskey industry, for example. So we wanted to make great Icelandic whiskey instead of just making average Scots in Iceland. The easier route would have been to call in a Scottish expert. First thing he would say is, uh, you can't use the Icelandic barley. It, it has l way too little sugar, and, and you have to import this quality barley that we do. And do it the exact same way, and, and get the exact same product. And for us, we weren't seeking to do that. So we took the longer route and experimented. Because making whiskey is a, it's a very complex product. It's, yeah. it's, it sounds easy, you know, yeah. the, the general steps can yeah. be outlined in a few minutes, mm -hmm. but making great whiskey and a great product, it, it's a lot, whole lot harder. You need a very uh, diverse skill set. What helped us most grow as distillers and, and uh, uh, was actually doing the distilling. Yeah. And, and doing the distilling again and again and again, and doing the whole process, not just part of the process, just from grain to glass. And uh, uh, that brought us closer to the ingredients, closer to the process and, and what we like about it and, and, and throughout this we we learned the yeah. most, I would say. The yeah. distilling act and, and brewing act is, is sort of a mix between science and a craft. So you have have to have actually the both parts of it. You can't yeah. just have the academia of it, you have to have the uh, part of it too as well. Yeah, yeah understand. Whiskey 
starts in the ground as barley or other types of grain we as a family uh, on a farm yeah where uh, barley is grown typically it, it would be used as cattle feed and one day we thought to ourselves that we should maybe find an alternative uh, way of utilizing this barley mm -hmm. and we just said hey let's make whiskey yeah awesome yeah icelandic barley is sort of a hardy strain selected and cultivated here in Iceland uh, as a strain to just survive the actual summer we get really wow which is not that warm mm -hmm. and not that long we in Iceland we're actually just reaching the the zone where we can grow barley because whiskey making is all about getting the flavor of the raw ingredients through into a finished distilled product and then refining it by maturing it on a cask talk to me about smoking the barley with sheep dung i mean obviously this is not some gimme marketing tool that you guys came up with to sell i mean this is actually icelandic tradition correct it, it's tradition in iceland and actually has been used in many parts of the world uh, it's better than it actually sounds because we have to keep the sheep in farmhouses during the winter they get fat there on the floor and, and uh, live there their whole winter and after the winter there's like a thick layer of compact earth which is a mixture of hay grass sheep dung slight hint of urine they muck, muck that out dry it out during the summer months and would use that as a fuel source we'll use the heat houses cook with and uh, smoke with but nowadays we have like less smelly ways of heating our houses <laughs> yeah. so we only use it to smoke with we're actually in flavor somewhere between scottish irish and weirdly enough uh, bourbon which makes sense because we're an island in the middle of the atlantic ocean between all these great whiskey whiskey making nations uh, from here uh, yeah. we, uh, we put it into our mill yep mill it up we then transfer it into a mash tank this mash tank is the first uh, processing stack we do here in okay where we do uh add geothermally heated water so we start with just fresh clean icelandic cold water which we heat up using a, a heat transfer from geothermal heat hot water and the mashing process is a little bit reversed for us because we don't start with cold water and heat it up mm -hmm. we start with hot water and then we simply let it drop in temperature until we've uh, mashed and activated all the starches cool it down mm -hmm. and transfer it through a fermentation tank we're doing this a little bit back to basic and yeah. looking at what whiskey was to start with yes so we do a grain in fermentation we ferment with the barley in it you can actually see it uh, a little bit unclearly here that it's yeah. layered the liquid is quite warm because of the yeah. activity of the uh, fermentation if you look back in yes. 1700s yes this is the way this they would do it way. they yeah. wouldn't have any equipment available for yeah. them to separate the barley and as we keep the barley in, we get even more extraction of the flavor yeah. get more spices more oils four days have passed what happens next so after that we uh, transfer it to our strip stills yep which is called uh, maria and Yanni. yes <laughs> they handle the process of uh, stripping all the alcohol from this distiller spirit. We start distilling it and uh, constantly agitated with our agitator. After that, we start getting about 45% alcohol and we run it all the way down to 1% alcohol. Wow. And we're just getting all the alcohol. From, so from 900 liters of the distiller spirit, we yeah. get about 260 liters to 80 liters of what's called the low wine. We have a very raw low wine with a lot of oils, a lot of character, yeah, and a lot of essence in it. So what's that, the white film? Uh, this is oil condensation. It's oil. It's just basically oil that comes from the barn. And what whiskey is, actually just alcohol, yeah. combined with various fat molecules, yeah. which is the flavor. Uh, the next step, we add it to Elizabeth, our spirit still, yes. uh, named after my grandmother. I'm not sure she's happy about that. <laughs> start heating it with an indirect heat source. And then the distillate starts coming up. What we start with getting from the condensing column is about 75-78% alcohol. And this is then when we cut it down to three distinct parts, which is the hats, the hearts, and the tails. The hats is the uh, lighter components which we start with and then we start running with the hearts which is the best distinct flavor of the whiskey after we cut from the heart we start collecting the tails and distill all the alcohol from the pot all the way down to one percent and then as i said we use the heads and tails combined with the low one in the next run of the spirit transfer it to uh oak casks then we just wait you just wait and yeah. apparently it takes 12 years to make a 12 year old whiskey <laughs> yeah. This was a young month barrel, which yeah. was matured for 18 months in it. Yeah. We took the front of the barrel and, and, and then a lot of the young ones seeped into the barrel. We bottled the young one. We shipped this to a uh, and Berkus, yeah. where they use it to mature their stout. Yes. Make a barrel aged stout. Yeah. Uh, so the stout 
gets a lot of the characteristics of Floki because a lot of the, the wood is permeated by Floki yomalt in it. And they matured their stout there for two or three months and uh, shipped the barrel back to us. And now the barrel is permeated by their stout. Yeah. And then we refill it with a yomalt barrel. Wow. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it's a sweet fruitiness. And, that, and like you said, this is 61%. Yeah. And this is that no. stouty mush yes. in, the, in the undertone. Yeah. It comes through so strong uh, and it, it works with the characteristics we have on the young one. And this is going to be a phenomenal cast conscious ready. This is what Iceland's about, you know, but this is just one. As we were driving before, you saw all the other different waterfalls. I mean, so this is just one of many. I mean, everywhere you turn around Iceland, there's something, something different, unique to, to see. And That's yeah. tomorrow's storm. This is the evil, is, yeah, tomorrow. evil eye, yes. Yes. At two o'clock. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How long are you supposed to just just uh, uh, a couple hours? Half no, a day? until I think Saturday morning. 